Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Robert Koenig, a Faye Jones School of Architecture graduate from the class of 1990. I'm currently serving on the board of the Arkansas Alumni Association. And on behalf of the association and the Faye Jones School, I would like to welcome you to Arkansas Alumni Presents, a series today featuring, featuring the school. Today is the first of a series of four presentations over the next two weeks. Today, Dean Peter McKeith will lead us with insights with department heads. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Dean Peter McKeith. Peter, good morning. Thanks so much, Robert. And thanks very much to the University Alumni Association for organizing this entire series and for providing the Faye Jones School with uh, four uh, not just one, but four uh, different uh, occasions for presentations. It certainly uh, speaks to the breadth of activity underway in the school. And uh, we'll look forward to further presentations, in fact, uh, this week on Thursday, uh, and then next week also on Monday and Thursday. There'll be a reminder of that at the very end of, of this presentation. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Robert for the introduction and move swiftly to the task as we have um, just a brief hour and we'd like to include some time for questions and answers in particular with our department heads. Uh, I'll begin in a way that uh, hopefully indicates the central priority of the school uh, and that is uh, the perspective of our students. If it in fact occurs. Welcome to the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. Design is only limited by your imagination. Design is innovation in material technologies. Design is working with your community. There is no greater charge that can be posed on us than the opportunity to really make people happy. Design is learning different perspectives. Design is thinking about the environment. Design improves people's quality of life. Having the opportunity to creatively solve problems. Welcome to the transformative world of design. Welcome to a community of designers. Welcome to having a voice through design. Welcome to the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. Welcome. Now, hmm. I have to keep this going here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Come on. A central question for the school, and perhaps it has always been the question for the school in any year, has been what does it mean to be the Faye Jones School of Architecture Design in 2020? The school now, as I hope our alumni know, quickly approaches its 75th year of academic programs, first in architecture, then in landscape architecture, and with the, the addition of interior design to the school in 2010, coming from the College of Agriculture, it is now a fully fledged multi-departmental, multi-research center, multi-outreach center school. Um, we have the moment as we approach the 75th year to think deeply and uh, act substantially upon our responsibilities as a school of architecture and design. We can think about this in a number of ways. And in fact, it's important to think about this in ways that are diverse and that are inclusive. We can see the current circumstances within which the school and the university operates in are a laminate of a public health crisis, an economic crisis, a social and racial justice crisis, and a climate change crisis. And all of these are significant areas for work through design. And in fact, we are compelled to work in design on these issues by virtue of the code of ethics in architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. So this is one way to look at a school. A second way, of course, is to see the school in the context of the university. And this is what we will be exploring as well over these next several sessions. Of course, the university has its mission and the Faye Jones School has its own mission. Uh, 
uh, relative to the university mission to advance design excellence through a multidisciplinary place responsive, and I'll say now inclusive design education in service to Arkansas, the nation and the world. We have a vision and significantly that vision connects directly to the university's vision of building a better world. We propose that we design a more humane, resilient future for the state of Arkansas, the nation and the world. In these current circumstances, we can be even more distilled and propose that through design, we provide our students with a superior professional education and career preparation. We design for excellence. We demonstrate the virtues of public service, the necessity of advocacy and the necessity of inclusion. We design for everyone. And thirdly, in a distilled way, through design, we attempt and work to assist our students in addressing state, nation, national, and even global imperatives. That is to say, we design for environmental and economic resiliency. What does it mean to be a Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design named in honor of Faye Jones? At the least, we would propose that it uh, necessitates an emphasis on uh, excellence in education and excellence in design. And in this very swift summary, I hope it's clear to our alumni listening in that the school continues uh, to build upon the legacy, not only of Faye Jones, uh, but of John Williams and of so many others uh, on the faculty and our alumni who have succeeded in their uh, career choices throughout these last 75 years. This past year alone has brought significant honors to our faculty, including Professor Blackwell, Professor Luoni, Professor Folan, Professor Smith, Professor Baker, myself, Professor Goodstein Murphy. All of this we believe is an extension of the legacy of the school. We can understand the school through its facilities, this AIA National Honor Award uh, winning uh, Stephen L. Anderson Design Center and the renovated Vol Walker Hall. We can understand this through the University of Arkansas Community Design Center and now University of Arkansas Resiliency Center and their facility in the prior center on the downtown square. We can understand it through the significant acquisition of the Faye and Gus Jones house, uh, not uh, two miles distant from the campus, which now forms the really the heart of our uh, growing programs and emphases in preservation design. Here too, I'd like to recognize the leadership of Associate Professor Greg Herman as the steward of the Faye and Gus Jones House. We certainly uh, want to acknowledge the facilities, the extended classroom of the school in Hot Springs in the 210 acre Garvin Woodland Gardens, uh, which is now graced by the presence of this wonderful treehouse structure designed by our alumni led firm of Modus Architects. And of course, we look forward to a new facility um, now entering design phase uh, next year to enter into groundbreaking phase and hopefully to be dedicated in the fall of 2023. This is the Anthony Timberland Center for Design and Materials Innovation on Martin Luther King Boulevard uh, south of, of the uh, central campus itself. So we can understand the school through its facilities and through its outreach. We can understand the school further through the devotion, loyalty and contributions of its alumni, its friends and its benefactors. And of course, this can be quantified in certain ways through the most recent, uh, conclu the conclusion of our recent capital campaign in which Mary Purvis, Ryan, Peter, Ryan Peters and others uh, all worked together to help raise uh, upwards of $68 million in total support for the school over the last eight years. Uh, significant advances made in terms of scholarships, capital projects, support for our faculty, uh, support for our staff and support for our public programs. We can understand the school quantifiably, numerically perhaps, in terms of enrollment numbers. And you'll hear from our department head soon exactly how this breaks down more specifically. But the school has grown significantly just in the last six years. Total enrollment as we started this fall stands at 730. Last spring, it was 585. This school continues to grow, continues to prosper, 
And as we propose now to the provost and the chancellor, uh, our next steps are really towards wise managed growth going forward. But we can also understand the school in much more directly human terms. This is a, a, a group photograph of some of our recent graduates, uh, wonderful young people who are now uh, reaching out uh, through their lives and through their careers and through their work into the world. This is really the true aspiration of the school to graduate students uh, into the design professions, into the design disciplines, into careers of value, uh, really to meet their ambitions through their own voices and their own identities. And this is one last way of understanding the school, a diagram perhaps that really forms the structure for our sessions uh, this week and next week, which is to say that the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design enters its 75th year, situated as we know, uh, in the state of Arkansas, serving all the citizens of the state of Arkansas, surrounded really by its core disciplines of architecture, landscape architecture and interior design, extending out into the world through its research centers and its outreach programs, Garvin Woodland Gardens, the University of Arkansas Community Design Center and the Resiliency Center and soon to come, as I've said, the Anthony Timberland Center. And we'll hear more about those in a future session. And then in further outreach and in further focal points, uh, it's important to highlight the work that the school is doing now in timber and wood, in preservation, in resiliency, in community, with, in housing, and on the horizon in health and wellness. And we'll touch on these in future sessions at the end of next week. But we're going to begin with our academic programs and our core disciplines. And uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, soon enough, uh, in succession, our heads of departments of architecture, landscape ar interior design and landscape architecture to take us in depth into those programs. But before doing so, I'll ask Associate Dean Ethel Goodstein Murphy to give us a sense of the school's all school and interdepartmental programs, academic programs that span across the disciplines and further enrich our curriculum overall. Ethel, if you would. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Dean McKeith set forth the ethical agendas that fall to us as designers in this very unique time in history in which we find ourselves. Uh, a period in time when design practice has to step up and address the wicked problems of our environment, of social justice, of equity for our larger communities. Certainly in the fullness of the morning, uh, my good colleagues at department heads will speak. Ethel, you froze. Am I unfrozen? Now you're back. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, it will fall to uh, my esteemed colleagues at department heads to speak specifically to how the individual design disciplines are preparing our students for moving into uh, the complex and demanding world that awaits them uh, when they leave the academy. Uh, but I hope that my mantra uh, will ring through those presentations. And my mantra is, if we can't address the critical agendas that face us in curriculum, where else can we do it? How do we look at things from design perspectives that will add value to what our students, soon to be our graduates, will bring to the world. And that's where our cross-disciplinary and multidisciplinary programs really come into focus. Some of these programs will be familiar to you. Some are reflective of new initiatives that speak to the overarching principles and agendas that Peter already has set forth. First on the list, one sort of the most familiar and hmm. 
The school has participated actively in maximizing the amenities that the Honors College provides to all students in campus. But in the last few years, we have purposely rebuilt the Faye Jones School Honors Program to be an all school program. So that honors distinction for one of our graduates means the same thing, regardless of what discipline that young woman or man comes from. Students of all disciplines work together in a methods of design inquiry course that builds up to honors capstones that increasingly are diversifying from pure research endeavors to endeavors that can embrace service learning, giving back to the community and working collaboratively. Approximately one quarter of our students participate in the honors program. And knowing who's that in that audience, let me throw out a sense of measurement. Uh, I taught the research methods courses. It was then called for honors students, a requirement last, last time in fall 2011, I had six students. We will have 33 students in our required research honors course this spring. That's enormous. It's a good thing. We have also been purposeful about giving all of our students the opportunities to follow those areas of learning, practice, and inquiry that are of special importance to them and that they see having a role in shaping the focus of their own practices as they emerge out. We have created within the school a series of all school minors, and I'm gonna be a little bit out of order here, uh, very focal in that, and it will surprise no one that I will speak to our history of architecture and design minor first, a program that we created about five years ago. Uh, that is probably our second most subscribed minor for students who take the opportunity to look at both the ancient and the contemporary through the lenses of history and theory and our position to unpack today's critical problems through the lenses of the past. Our most populated minor in the school is the campus-wide minor in sustainability, which we are very pleased to report is under the guidance of Ken McCowan, now administered fully by the Faye Jones School and the sustainability minor gives students the opportunity to look at resilience and sustainability in a number of uh, pertinent contexts of design planning and technology culminating in the creation of a sustainability capstone. For students within the school uh, and under the leadership of Carl Matthews, the interior design faculty very generously offers a minor to other students in the Faye Jones School, which enables uh, many of our landscape architecture students and architectural design students to enhance their abilities through an understanding of the very important distinctions that the making uh, and design of interior spaces, the systems, the furnishings that come with them uh, provide in part of a holistic design perspective. Our students also um, have the opportunity to pursue a minor in planning, uh, offered jointly with the political science and public policy program and um, directed by our own Noah Billig, uh, preparing students to have a unique perspective on the design uh, and operation of cities and in a wonderful uh, platform for many of our students who seek to enter uh, the realms of community design and urban planning upon graduation. In line with that, we're also exploring uh, possibilities for focused study in minors in urban studies, again, a critical agenda for contemporary practice. For our students who uh, veer outside the school and bravely cross campus to such places as the Walton College of Business, uh, minors in business have been pursued very successfully by our students 
And again, the takeaway here is adding value. Miners, lots more to be said, insufficient time. We have recalibrated our fifth year uh, and fourth year for the interior design student uh, education agenda by creating a series of interdisciplinary advanced studios. I know that the department heads will speak directly to the opportunities and subjects that have emerged there, but here again, timber, preservation, health and wellness. The critical issues that are a focus for the school are brought vividly to the students in design challenges, very often engaging outside consultants, engaging our distinguished visitors to afford opportunities for enhancement, increased expertise to confront the wicked problems that are increasingly in the world. Study abroad, uh, familiar I know to all of our alumni gathered, uh, remains even in these challenging times at the center of our agenda. Arguably there is no, there has been no time when global knowledge and global awareness could be more important to emerging, the desi emerging designers than it is now. So our Rome Center remains important. Uh, opportunities to study in Northern Europe, in Mexico, uh, are available to our students. And as our enrollment grows, looking at other opportunities that will afford further choice. Uh, we are struggling uh, in these, um, in the challenges of the pandemic, but there is no time like the present for planning uh, ahead. So those experiences that remind us, as I always like to tell the student, that our agenda as designers is not defined by artificial parameters of where the exterior surface of the building begins and ends, where the lawn and the threshold uh, separate, but by larger principles and prospects of study, all of which we hope will in invest our students with value added as they enter the world of practice. Uh, in later um, meetings, we will unpack with greater specificity our Master of Design Studies, our uh, new post-professional degree. We have had our first graduate last year. Uh, and our collaborative work with the Department of Engineering, pardon me, the School of Engineering, in creating a master's of construction management. So think of those last two items as teasers to come back for the session on graduate education. And with that, uh, and for the deeper dive, I will turn it back to Peter and uh, the department heads. Thanks so much, Ethel. Um, yes, let's move to the, the main events, which is really, um, to understand through the department has perspective, both the work of the department as well as achievements of faculty and students. We'll begin with the Department of, uh, of Architecture uh, uh, to, uh, and I will then uh, ask uh, Professor John Folan, head of the department to introduce himself, introduce the department and follow up with uh, further highlights. And after John Folan, we'll move to interior design and then lastly to landscape architecture. John Folan, if you would. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to join uh, you all today. Um, uh, we've been asked to provide a very brief bio. I'm a fairly recent arrival to uh, the Faye Jones School in the University of Arkansas. I arrived here in the summer of uh, 2019 uh, and have been very privileged to be a part of that faculty. Um, Prior to joining the, the faculty here and, and taking on the responsibilities as the department head, uh, I was an endowed chair at Carnegie Mellon University for uh, 12 years um, as the Fitzgibbon chair. Uh, while I was there, I founded two nonprofit organizations. Uh, one is the Urban Design Build Studio, which has been uh, carried with me uh, to the Faye Jones School to expand that body of work, uh, as well as um, Project RE, which is a 
uh, 20,000 square foot uh, job skill training facility um, and prefabrication facility located in Pittsburgh, uh, which I still remain the executive director of. Um, I have a professional practice that I've run, very small professional practice that I've run alongside with other nonprofit efforts uh, in public interest design, uh, as well as uh, affordable housing, uh, which has been the focus of uh, my teaching the past uh, 18 years. Actually, it's going on uh, 19 or 20 years now. Um, but the focus has been in purpose-driven uh, design build work that is a benefit to the communities uh, where uh, the universities reside, uh, where I've been. Uh, my professional practice work focuses primarily on adaptive reuse, uh, light, commercial, and residential. And prior to teaching, uh, I uh, had devoted myself entirely to um, uh, professional practice, uh, working uh, primarily in large scale uh, institutional projects. So <clears throat> for me, it was a, a great honor to be uh, asked uh, to join the faculty at the Fay Jones School. This is uh, uh, an institution that I have uh, admired for years uh, for a number of reasons, which uh, I will articulate through the lens of uh, faculty accomplishments, uh, what we have on the horizon, uh, what's been established uh, as a framework, uh, hoping that we can build upon that as an effort. Uh, next slide. So where we are uh, today, um, as Peter had indicated, um, we have been benefiting from uh, significant growth uh, in the program. Uh, at present, we have 429 architecture students. Uh, four, 416 of those are in the professional uh, bachelor of architecture program. And then we have 13 who are enrolled in the architectural uh, studies program, the bachelor of science program. Uh, that represents an 8.7% growth uh, over last year uh, when I first arrived. Um, so we're, start, we're continuing to see growth uh, and interest and strength of the program. Where we are in terms of the breakdown, um, those breakdowns are indicated uh, below uh, the general statistics. Uh, we are close to 50-50 uh, in terms of uh, gender breakdown. Um, we have uh, distribution in terms of uh, African-American um, enrollment at 5.6%, 2.6% Native American, 4.7% Hispanic, 4.7% uh, um, Asian, 7.9% Hispanic, uh, and then we have uh, a healthy um, international uh, uh, body. At present, we, are, we have 77% of our students completing their degree programs on time, um, which is a fairly high uh, rate relative to um, uh, institutions across the United States. Um, things that we will be looking uh, toward doing uh, in coming years, uh, particularly in the arena of diversity, equity, and inclusion is striving to um, uh, get the school to parallel uh, trends that exist within um, the population of the United States. So um, what we want to do is make sure that we have uh, equal representation um, across, the, uh, across the discipline. Uh, we also like to see uh, an elevation in the number of uh, students who are completing their degree program uh, on time. Uh, this is in parallel with efforts, uh, of course, nationwide, uh, where there has been discussion about um, the duration of the, the uh, formal training uh, and pass to uh, registration, which, which will become a focus as well. Uh, next slide. So in terms of the department, things that uh, are great strengths that uh, we can build upon um, this is a place-based department. It's a place-based school. Uh, it has always been that way. Uh, and that is one of the strengths uh, of the department and of the school. It's very much of this place. It's of the region. The work that's developed here is regionally significant. Uh, it's been regionally significant throughout uh, its existence uh, as the only um, school of architecture, department of architecture in the state uh, it establishes its, its significance uh, 
by virtue of that statistic alone, but it's also by virtue of what's been accomplished. Uh, this is the only school to have had two uh, AIA gold medalists um, on the faculty as full-time faculty members uh, who also had uh, leadership roles within uh, the department and the school. Um, those individuals uh, set the tone in terms of establishing the significance of this department. Uh, their work obviously has had great global relevance uh, and uh, the students and the graduates that um, emerge from this program have demonstrated that global relevance uh, consistently. Replacing students with uh, increasing frequency uh, throughout the globe uh, across the United States, we're gonna be seeking uh, to do that um, as we expand in terms of the enrollment. Uh, it it uh, only stands that we need to uh, start looking for more and more opportunities for our students to um, uh, bear uh, their talents and what they've learned uh, in a broader context. So we will be looking to expand um, that, that sense. Um, there are very few schools or departments of architecture uh, in the United States that can really very clearly articulate over the entire uh, span of their existence, um, having this balance of regional significance, regional impact, uh, and global relevance. Um, things that the, the department has predicated um, and prided itself on in the past, uh, valuing craft, uh, val valuing building, uh, valuing construction, valuing architecture, uh, those continue uh, and will continue to be uh, the bedrock and the foundation of the work that we do. Um, we clearly value integrated design, uh, which is understood through some of the work that will be shown um, uh, in, in subsequent slides uh, and is as part of a broader school. Uh, we clearly value collaboration in the context of uh, relationships with the uh, allied uh, disciplines of interior design and landscape architecture. Um, areas where we're going to be looking to increase uh, our abilities and enhance our abilities will be in the role of, uh, in the areas of uh, digital capacities. Uh, we have two faculty searches, or we have a faculty search that will be um, conducted this spring. Uh, we will be advertising, uh, we've started to advertise uh, recently and we'll be expanding through networks that we have uh, to recruit uh, people who can help us expand the digital capacities of schools, specifically in the use of building information modeling, building performance design, virtual reality, uh, and uh, augmented reality. Um, while we have a very strong role in the community and have always had a strong role within the community, that can be expanded. Um, and it can be expanded by virtue of our mission as a land grant institution. Uh, and it can be expanded by virtue of the abilities that our students have and that they possess and that the faculty possess in having a positive impact uh, on the region. Uh, this is a broader global consideration, um, particularly within the United States. Uh, is in elevating uh, the understanding of what design is, what design's, what design's potential is, and the impact that it can have. Um, we will be looking to increase uh, diversity, looking at increasing opportunities for those from underrepresented communities, those who typically uh, do not see design as an avenue, we'll be looking uh, to provide paths for those individuals uh, through the department uh, so that they can take a greater role of leadership uh, in their own communities. Uh, this runs hand in hand with the notion of expanding the role in the community. Uh, our role is to uh, develop future leaders here. Uh, and by developing those future leaders, uh, we need to expand the voice that they have and expand the reach that they have. Um, by virtue of this work, uh, we intend to elevate the ranking of this school. Uh, I firmly believe I came here because of the strengths of this department and of this school and the bright horizon. 
uh, as well as what had been established before. Uh, this department um, has performed well above what its ranking uh, is for a long time. So part of this will have to do with uh, messaging, uh, how we get the message out, um, but uh, other parts will be uh, in, in further strengthening, uh, diversifying and expanding uh, capacities in, in what we've done uh, well for an extended period of time. So I remain very optimistic on that front. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of uh, students uh, and their performance, some uh, things that we, I think we can celebrate and speak to the strength of the Department of Architecture. Um, uh, using this single image to uh, uh, illustrate some of the work that was completed in the TransLogic Studio, which was coordinated. That's our terminal uh, integrated design studio, which was uh, coordinated um, by Marlon Blackwell and co-taught with uh, Professor John Bulkins and Professor Emily Baker on the fall of 2019. Um, we, uh, it's currently being coordinated by Professor Frank Jacobus uh, and being co-taught um, with Francesco Badeschi, uh, Jonathan Bulkins and Emily Baker this fall. Uh, we recently had uh, a celebration of uh, work uh, on November 1st uh, with an awards jury that was headed by Yvonne Farrell of Grafton Architects and included uh, Bill Bates, uh, the AIA uh, national president, Kim Dowdell, uh, president of uh, NOMA, and uh, uh, managing partner with uh, Helmuth Obata and Kassebaum, and uh, our alumnus Billy Fleming uh, from the Department of Landscape Architecture. Um, they were um, unilaterally and universally impressed uh, by the work that was produced by the students. Um, this uh, project, which was produced uh, by Ryan West, uh, was the um, winning project, uh, the first place project uh, for the uh, IDS uh, awards program. Um, others that were recognized through that program were Ali Di Stefano, uh, Callie Harris, and Jessica Maynard uh, with the top three projects. Uh, the TransLogic uh, studio focused uh, on Wilson, Arkansas. Um, one of the great strengths that we have within this department as an asset is we are the only department that requires students to study abroad. Uh, there has been a strong legacy established here of taking students to um, uh, urbanized uh, regions throughout the United States uh, for each of their studios, as well as uh, travel uh, associated with um, professional electives. Uh, that serves our students uh, extraordinarily well, uh, and we've had the benefit of having them uh, come back and then focus their efforts in a very uh, concentrated way on uh, local projects. So the, the work that was executed um, with the um, municipality in Wilson uh, was uh, received quite well uh, by those community partners uh, and is uh, receiving the um, attention uh, and praise of uh, uh, significant leadership nationally. Um, for the second year in a row, uh, we are one of eight um, departments of architecture to uh, be invited to the REBA uh, medal program. Uh, we have had four students uh, submit uh, entries. We're waiting to hear uh, the results on those. Uh, one of them is coming out of the um, uh, studio, the context of emptiness, which was co-taught by Marlon Blackwell and Steve Luoni and focused on uh, Detroit. Uh, Joshua Levy is representing the department uh, in that work. Uh, Joshua was also recognized as part of the uh, annual awards uh, here, receiving the advanced studio uh, prize for his efforts there. Um, Brandon Clifford and Emily Baker uh, have nominated Hannah Both and Cassidy Hooper uh, for work that was done by extension of the John G. Williams uh, studio last spring as part of the REBA um, submissions. Uh, and then we have two entries that are coming out of the third year, uh, Bryant Studios coordinated by Brian Holland, which focused on the uh, city of Los Angeles. Uh, one uh, studio focusing on um, uh, co-working space and the other uh, focusing on housing issues 
in that area. Uh, we recently have had um, a group of students recognized through the Art Urbane uh, International Concours International Competition. Um, we had two teams as finalists. Uh, one team, uh, one was uh, spearheaded by Lauren Davis, Cassidy Hooper, Nick Ryan, and Chelsea uh, Sukskankdal. So we have a lot of um, reason to be proud of uh, students, the graduates uh, that are emerging. Um, they continue to do strong work that's uh, of great relevance. Um, one that I'll speak about last and certainly not least uh, is uh, David Swear, who was awarded the uh, Adelot uh, Prize, uh, which is an extension of his work uh, with the Adelot Award. Um, uh, David continues uh, as his work through the uh, award program took him to six of the seven continents. Uh, he focused specifically on this sensibility uh, that we've discussed here previously of uh, regional significance or regional uh, relevance and deep local uh, and, and then uh, the parallel global relevance uh, in the work. Uh, next slide. We continue to benefit from uh, an extremely strong faculty. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we're going to be looking to expand uh, that faculty and we'll be looking to expand the diversity of that faculty uh, in the coming years. Uh, with the uh, search upcoming, we'll be focusing um, again on digital capacities, uh, specifically in uh, fabrication, building information modeling, um, production, uh, and then uh, another position that focuses on building performance and uh, simulation. Um, we have had, uh, uh, in the context of COVID uh, this year, we have been uh, very fortunate, uh, even though the uh, Rome Center has not been uh, available to our students or available to us, uh, we have been able to establish a stronger link uh, with that by inviting the faculty to help teach remotely here. So uh, as you see on this slide, we've been joined by Francesco Badeschi, Francesca Ricardo, Antonella Buono, Consuelo Lola Brigida, uh, and Ricardo Di Aquino. Uh, Francesco has been helping us specifically in IDS, uh, expanding our abilities with uh, building performance simulation. Francesca has been running an urban design uh, based studio. Antonella Buono, who is uh, an exceptionally accomplished uh, fashion designer, uh, has been brought in to help with design thinking uh, and uh, um, in the first year studio. Uh, and we've uh, benefited greatly from uh, Consuelo's uh, professional electives and Ricardo's um, uh, participation in the second year. Um, we have been joined uh, this year by two new faculty, Candy Adams, who is uh, an alumnus of the program that uh, is probably familiar to many of you. Uh, Candy has been teaching in the second uh, and third year studios. Uh, she will continue this spring teaching in the third year studio, and then we'll offer a professional elective on uh, housing that is uh, grant funded through Weyerhaeuser. Uh, and Ghazi Brown uh, has joined us uh, from Little Rock. She comes in here every Friday and works with us. She's been a great addition to the third year studio uh, and is helping us in terms of student mentorship uh, relative to uh, our DEI initiatives. Um, I, I do want to speak a moment um, about the uh, accomplishments of the faculty that we've, we have. Um, Peter, of course, gave a, an overview. Um, I, I do want to underscore, I don't think um, it can be said too many times this, about the significance of having two uh, AIA gold medalists. Um, this year, we haven't had the opportunity to celebrate maybe as, as, uh, in the way that we wanted to, but of course we have Marlon uh, receiving the gold medal. Uh, was also named the SEC Professor of the Year. As Peter had mentioned, Steve Luoni um, was named the ACSA Distinguished uh, Professor in 2020. Um, our younger faculty, uh, Professor Je Jessica Colangelo, has continued to have success uh, through her private practice, Somewhere Studio, which has worked uh, with our fabrication lab uh, in realizing some of their work. Um, they have recently won an AIA Small Projects uh, Award, 
which uh, for those of you who've been keeping track is uh, another accomplishment and a long line of uh, accolades that uh, she and uh, her partner and husband, Charles Sharpless, uh, have received uh, for the Salvage Swings project. Um, they will be McDowell Colony uh, Fellows this summer, uh, another uh, significant uh, accomplishment for them. Um, Frank Jacobus, Professor Frank Jacobus has worked, he just finished the submission of the final manuscript uh, for a book called The Making of Things, which promises to uh, celebrate and highlight uh, many of the uh, pedagogical underpinnings of, uh, in the, within the Department of Architecture. We also feel that this book is significant in terms of um, the collaboration with Rachel Smith Lortz, uh, Angie Carter, and uh, Justin Tucker. So um, I'm going to um, conclude with those uh, remarks. Um, there are several other awards and acknowledgments um, that the department has received, the faculty and students. Um, but I look forward to uh, meeting all of you in person who I've not yet uh, met in person and uh, continuing conversations on how we can uh, how we can continue the strengths uh, in developing the department. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, John. I'd like to uh, move forward. Oops, sorry. What has happened here? Unbelievable. I'd like to move forward with uh, 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 Carl Matthews and uh, the Department of Interior Design. Uh, Carl, if you would. Um, sure, um, I'll just be very brief. Um, so my education uh, comes from, well, interior design is a strange discipline. Sometimes we're located in schools of architecture, sometimes in human ecology and sometimes in art. And I've sought a career and educational background that um, combines all three of those approaches to making interior spaces and um, educating interior design students. And so I, I, I seek to bring the best of all three of those worlds uh, to my work and, um, and the education of designers. Uh, I, I did start teaching young. I was only uh, 32 years old when I started my teaching career at Nebraska. Um, but before that, I worked for large corporate firms in New York and Chicago. And for the first 10 years of teaching, I would go back in the summers to New York, uh, Seattle, and San Francisco and work for uh, the big firms, Gensler, Callis, and HOK. So that's kind of the underpinning of, of my uh, professional work. And as you can see, I've taught at uh, Nebraska for 10 years, Texas for nine, and now I've been here at uh, Arkansas for eight and plan to be here until they put me in the ground. Um, next, please. <laughs> <Carl>. <laughs> <laughs> Which may be sooner than later, I don't know. <laughs> um, interior design has had amazing growth in um, the last five years. Um, and you can see the um, growth rates here. Um, but what this all adds up to, if we go to the next slide, is that um, interior design has been the fastest growing department on the University of Arkansas campus uh, for the years 2017 to 2020. I think it was 94, 96% growth rate in those three years. Um, so that's uh, pretty astounding. And, and so, um, so sure, it's great to grow in numbers, but you've got to maintain quality. Uh, one indicator of the quality is that our students, uh, we've had four Dongia scholarship winners in the past six years. For those who don't know, Dong the Dongia scholarship is a $30,000 scholarship um, given to students to, um, for their uh, fourth year of study in interior design. And so our students are competing against and winning against uh, the top schools in the country. Um, so uh, four in the past six years is pretty amazing. Uh, next slide. Um, so like John, um, we diversity is a challenge in interior design. Um, this shows the comparison of the, the uh, diverse uh, race and ethnicity in the interior design program on the left and the race and ethnicity on the right of the state of Arkansas. And we're pretty much on track with um, all groups except African-American. That is where the biggest um, area of focus needs to be in the recruitment uh, of the next coming years. Uh, next, please. 
The other issue with interior design is um, the gendered nation of uh, the gendered um, notion of the profession. And so, as you can see, we only have 6% male um, uh, students, but the state of Arkansas is 49% male. So, so African American and male students are the two areas of focus that we're going to work on in our focused um, recruiting in the next um, in the coming years. Uh, next slide. Um, to deal with the growth, um, we added four new faculty uh, this year. And as you can see, uh, three of the four are women of color. Um, uh, all three of them are from international backgrounds. So I, I think we're um, putting into practice our focus on an international focus to um, interior design education and practice. Next, please. Um, so even though we've had this really strange year of um, the COVID um, and, um, and, and people getting laid off and furloughed around the country, um, almost all of our third year students actually got internships this past summer. And the, the types of firms that they worked for weren't kind of the usual suspects of the Genslers and, and um, Perkins and Wills and that that we usually see, but the students were very, um, um, they beat the streets and got out there and got jobs, they got paying jobs and, and, and are doing internships uh, in spite of uh, the pandemic. Uh, next, please. And, and then another indicator of success is that one of our students who graduated last year, and she, uh, this is Sloan Auger, she is the, graduated as the top student um, for all disciplines in, in the Faye Jones School last spring. And she was selected as one of 25 students internationally um, to, to um, participate in this, um, the YAC Academy in Italy, and she's just finishing that up. And um, by being selected as one of the top 25 students internationally, and, and let me just say, this is, is a, a competition that's mostly focused on architecture students. So for an interior design student to have the chutzpah um, to, to go after this, um, this um, honor, I think uh, says something about um, how we're uh, preparing our students to compete uh, not only within the realm of interior design, but um, across disciplines. And, and Sloan is uh, assured an internship at one of those firms, Noheda, Liebeskin, Big, or Zaha Hadid, uh, when she completes the program. And I think that's it, Peter. Yeah, thanks, Carl, uh, very much. Um, and then I would like to pass on to uh, Ken McCown, professor and head of the Department of Landscape Architecture. Ken, please. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to everyone um, who's here this morning. It's great to be able to have this opportunity to speak with you. My name is Ken McCown. I have a background in architecture and landscape architecture, and I um, practice ecological urban design and, and very interested in um, sustainable building and sustainable methods. If we can go to the next slide, Peter. So the Department of Landscape Architecture is, is a little bit of a different uh, department than the previous two. We are a smaller department and we have around 63 students. We deliver two degrees, the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture and the Bachelor of Landscape Studies. We also are home to three of the minors in terms of administration. And we too have seen um, tremendous growth over the last three to four years. We've gone from 26 students to 63 students. This is um, about 25 times higher a percentage rate of growth than what we're seeing in landscape architecture departments nationally. Peter, next. So the, the strengths and ambitions of the department, um, what, we, what we really wanna do is we wanna grow to expand our impact. So that, that's what our ambition is. And of course we share the diversity goals as have been expressed by the other two departments. We have recently gone through a curriculum revision and thought about our size, thought about what we do really well and thought about what our students need as they graduate. And we see um, design and design across scales as being a strength within a department and advocacy, understanding how to have impact through design. And we are working um, with our students in terms of good design following good inquiry. So how do you think about problems? How do you work them through with communities? And then design is also the implementation um, of the problem solving. So we're very invested in the construction means, methods, and materials 
of um, landscape architecture. And then advocacy is something that we've put an emphasis on in the last year and a half. So we've taken our six unit design studios and made them five unit studios with a one unit advocacy module. And this unit helps students understand who they are in terms of their disposition as advocates. Some of them may be outgoing um, and outspoken leaders and others may be more introverted um, and they may wanna have impacts through other means, through behind the scenes or through things like writing. So um, almost all of our studios are connected in with the community and we spend a lot of time training the students um, how to interact with the community, how to, how to um, work community meetings and understand stakeholder processes. And on the bottom of the slide, you can see just a few of the groups that we've worked with through our studio engagement and through our classroom engagement in the last four years. So we've engaged primarily with the nonprofit and um, government industries our government sectors, I should say. The um, Trust for Public Land and the Nature Conservancy are what I call the Coke and Pepsi of the nonprofit sector and what we do. And we've had wonderful opportunities to do outreach projects with them. Jim Kaufman and Kimball Erdman have been leading an effort with the National Park Service through funded projects about how to connect um, regional and federal rural lands in with local communities through active transportation. We have a really interesting project going on in downtown Hot Springs right now for the end of a trailhead um, that's coming down from Little Rock and it's gonna link people into the federal lands there. So we've had lots of outreach and lots of engagement for our students and our faculty. Next, please. Yep. All right. <laughs> um, this slide is about the faculty and what the faculty are up to. What you're seeing on the bottom of the slide is a project that was done by Gabriel Diaz Montemayor and Carl Smith. Carl and Gabriel worked with the city of Santa Cruz in Bolivia. Um, the city of Santa Cruz in Bolivia has had absolutely epic and explosive growth. And the developers have been um, sprawling the city but not investing in the public infrastructure. So our students um, did what's called a tactical urbanism toolkit. And tactical urbanism is a means of um, urban design production that puts the power in, in the hands of the people. So in this toolkit, the students, um, the students and faculty work together to basically give the Bolivian communities um, color palettes, ideas for imagery they might be able to use, um, paving patterns, materials that they could use for paving, trees, planters, all those types of things. And what you're seeing is one of the results of the outcomes of that, that toolkit. So this is an example of advocacy in action through our department, um, how we're working not just within Fayetteville or within Northwest Arkansas or within the state, but we're actually trying to have worldwide impact. Gabrielle has basically been feeding landscape architecture in Latin America. Landscape architecture does not exist as a profession in Latin America. And Gabrielle has been lecturing at almost every school, it seems in Mexico and also in other countries to help them establish curriculum um, so that there can be more activities like this going on in these rapidly developing Latin American cities. Kimball Erdman's doing really exciting work with um, the National Park Service. He's using LIDAR and augmented reality um, to recreate historic landscapes like Japanese internment camps that have been erased. So you can actually go back inside them and um, experience them. Uh, he's also working at Carlsbad National Caverns, which is a World Heritage Site, and he's been doing LIDAR scanning and recreating um, the landscape down there. So if you've been working on incremental funding as the park director for Carlsbad over 40 years, um, LIDAR kind of helps you understand where all your stuff has been put over the last 40 years by having this 3D model um, that you can walk, or walk around in and see, see what's going on down in the caverns as a whole and not as a, a, a set of momentary experiences. No Ability has been um, producing wonderful articles and books on community planning and design for social and environmental justice. And he's got an upcoming project where he's gonna look at the Mississippi River from the Arkansas Delta up to Minneapolis. Jim Kaufman, as I noted, has been um, leading in transportation planning and the National Park Service, those grants. Scott Bealey has been doing wonderful professional practice work in Northwest Arkansas. He's been working with the museum um, 
of Native American history. He's got something coming up with uh, Crystal Bridges potentially, where he's gonna be working with them. And he's done a lot of outreach with Garvin and Woodland Gardens. In addition to his professional practice, he's really coming up with planting design theories for the region. As John noted, this is a regional school um, and Scott is really helping us that way. And then Patty Folan uh, has come to us and she's working on rural economic development and sustainability leadership. She's leading the capstone in sustainability and she's working on a funded grant for the um, city of Alturas, a small rural town in California. Next, please. And then our student, um, our student results have have been very interesting over the past four or five years. What we're seeing um, is increased uh, recognition within the central states region. I wanted to set a first step for us to be the central states as, as our first um, way that we can measure our design excellence. So we have been competing in the central states region in the last four years and doing as well as any school in the region. So Kansas State University is one of the top schools in the country. It's ranked fourth in the country. We have won as many awards as Kansas State um, inside the central states ASLA region in the last four years. And that's the, the leading amount. Um, of awards that any school has won in the last four years. This last year in 2020, we saw a dip in the region, but we recalibrated our um, level that we wanted to compete at. And we had a couple of entries in the um, national ASLA competition, and we won a national award for an integrated studio, the Living Building uh, Challenge Design Studio, which we did with Tricycle Farms in Fayetteville. And um, that project uh, was won by Jacob Costello, Ben McGee, Max Frank, and um, Bo Burris. And two of them have gone on and um, received good employment um, out there in the world doing interdisciplinary activity. Jacob was actually one of the first landscape architects hired on into an architecture firm. And Bo has recently been employed by um, Design Workshop in Austin inside their new office to help them with urban design. So we're very excited in terms of um, measuring our outcomes and seeing if we're achieving what we're setting out to achieve. And Peter, that might be it. I'm not sure I have another slide. That is it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, Carl. And thank you, John, um, for all that uh, you are uh, doing, uh, all that you have done. And through, by extension, I want to thank uh, all the faculty in all three departments for their incredible dedication, commitment, and, and true um, support of our students uh, throughout these last months in particular. Um, it is no small effort altogether. Uh, and of course, at the same time of maintaining your own agendas of creative practice and research and holding yourself to such high standards. It is as uh, I think all three department heads have said, uh, testimony to the legacy of the school, but also to the students we have and to the future commitments that we're making. Uh, this is really the end of our presentation for today. Um, I'm going to circle back to uh, an originating question. Was it, what does it mean to be our school in 2020? What should be, in fact, must be the work of our school in 2020, years going forward? Um, our next several sessions, in fact, on Thursday, where we uh, address issues of diversity and community engagement um, next week, when we talk about our centers of excellence in community design, resiliency design, and the uh, Anthony Timberland Center, as well as Garvin Goodland, Woodland Gardens. Uh, and then next Thursday, when we'll uh, turn to some of our future uh, ambitions, all of this constitutes the work of the school uh, in this year and years going forward. Uh, I uh, have left the chat column open uh, for questions. Um, again, I, uh, uh, end with uh, this uh, same circle of activity uh, for the school as we continue to resonate out from our core disciplines of architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. Um, we look ahead to Thursday the 3rd, Monday the 7th, and Thursday the 10th. Uh, and I think we're, we are able, if desired, to uh, remain uh, in session here for uh, questions if there are any. Um, the chat column is certainly open um, and if there are any shout outs that need to be given, uh, perhaps we can, uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing the screen and we can return to our grid altogether.
Robert, do you want to be a moderator if there are any, if there are any questions? Uh, I know our alumni are, are not shy about questions, so please um, shout out if that is uh, what you'd like to do. Well, one of the things I do want to thank Carl for uh, my, uh, my daughter's graduation virtually this year from the school uh, in interior design. She is now gainfully employed by one of my competitors in Kansas City. It's always interesting to see your daughter go to work for someone else, but gainfully employed, which is a great thing. And she's having the time of her life, uh, first, the first year out of school. And so as I looked at that for the third year uh, students, you know, be, being able to be or find a place in internships, I would reach out to all of my colleagues and say, any chance you can get uh, to place an intern in your firm or in your practice, I would say that it is well worthwhile. Um, I, I would say that without that, I think she would have struggled being able to find her first job, but she ended up with three internships during each summer after first year. And it, it was so important to her. It were things that abs absolutely her dad wasn't going to teach her. Um, but I'm so uh, thankful that that did occur. And I think that's something that all of us on the screen today and, and our outreach can certainly do to help um, the students that are there, the students that are coming uh, to find their way, uh, give them a look at practice, whether it's an in interior design, landscape architecture or architecture. I think it's a wonderful thing. And so maybe I've given somebody an idea or two to ask you a question. But thank you, Carl. And uh, thank you on behalf of Kara. Thanks, Robert. Um, we are in a bit of overtime now. I don't think it, it costs the Alumni Association anything to uh, go beyond the 1030 or sorry, the 1130 mark. Uh, but uh, again, questions or comments uh, in writing or, or in voice. <laughs> no? Uh, Charles McKinney, I see a hand quickly raised. You need to unmute. I'm in awe. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I am in awe, really. I mean, it was a great school when I was there and your leadership and the faculty that you recruited and your ambitions and your, your aspirations really are just exactly what is needed for this time. And I, I just voiced my sentiment, you know, um, I, I believe the Biden administration would benefit from your explorations in uh, rural economic development. Um, it's a critical, critical issue. And it, it's what's necessary really to heal our uh, communal efforts, I think. Yeah, Charles, thank you. Um in the first place for the, the compliment. It's, you know, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and a lot of very talented people who are incredibly committed to the teaching and learning mission. So um, there's a, a, so many people more than we have time to thank for that. Uh, but I can't, couldn't agree more with your identification of the work that uh, we are doing, have been doing, and certainly I wanna continue to do uh, with regard to the entirety of the state, definitely into its uh, rural uh, communities. Um, this ranges from housing to health and wellness, to community planning, to preservation. Uh, essentially every focus area that I've touched on has a relevance uh, statewide. And uh, we believe that this, uh, the, the presence of the school in this way is being noted uh, by many, certainly up into the governor's office, uh, within our, our federal um, congressional representation, uh, and also with uh, foundations from the more local and significant foundations uh, of uh, uh, the Walton Foundation, but also to more um, national or international corporate foundations, uh, such as Warehouser, uh, with whom we're starting to work on uh, rural housing initiatives uh, for instance. Um, 
there is a very close parallel to what we do in architecture, I think, in this state to what uh, is being done in agriculture, uh, to be honest. And I think that there's um, some important partnerships that are emerging now through our Resiliency Center and our Community Design Center in particular. Uh, so all of this to second what you're saying, um, and certainly to also say that the work is certainly not done. So, but thank you for the encouragement. Other just to, just to quickly say that um, the more you can publicize those sorts of issues in Arkansas, I think the more you'll help counter this bias against education and scientific exploration. Yeah, I think for us, it's it's been uh, it's important um, to continue to demonstrate the value of design and design education in uh, the lives of everyone. I, I won't say everyday people, we're all everyday people, but I definitely want to um, uh, underscore the necessity that we have as a school to really serve the, the largest number. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to take my cues from um, Gifford Pinchot, the first uh, head of the U.S. Forest Service, where he said that the, the role of the national forests are to serve the greatest good for the greatest number to the greatest benefit. I think that's what we are and really can be thinking ourselves, uh, thinking about ourselves on behalf of the state. How can we serve the greatest good uh, for the greatest number um, through design? Well, Robert, um, you're, the, you're the moderator, or I, I don't know if there's anyone else uh, that we should continue uh, to, uh, we're happy to entertain questions, but uh, we're coming on towards a lunch hour and design studio begins in an hour for several of us. Um, other questions or comments uh, as we come to a, a necessary conclusion? I would say thank you on behalf of the Arkansas Alumni Association for attending today, for everyone. Um, I think it's critical that you remain connected and, and actually just to absorb and to, to hear these words of what's going on in our school. Um, I think it's exciting. Uh, aside from all the other things that we hear and, and kind of the fuzz of the day around what's going on, I think uh, the Faye Jones School is marching on. And so that's, that's a great thing to hear from an alumni standpoint and uh, as a practitioner as well. Well, I'll thank, I'll thank you, Robert, again, and thank the Alumni Association again. We will be back on with a, a, a different uh, dimension of the school to present on uh, this coming Thursday, where our topics will be community engagement, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I believe that time is, is also the same time, or is it uh, 1130? Let's make sure. Mary Purvis, can you help me out? <laughs> No, let's let's make sure before we depart. So Thursday. Yeah. I'm looking, Peter. It is. I noon. should. One p.m. says Michelle Park. Noon. Uh, noon. Okay. So, yes. Noon to one p.m. on Thursday. Uh, there's a Zoom links to register for. We'll look forward to seeing uh, those of you who can attend. But thank you very much for your attendance today.